What's up guys, it's Ethan and I'm currently going viral on TikTok with over 2.5 million views on a video on how to catch your partner cheating using Wi-Fi. So I'm gonna show you how your Wi-Fi works, how the internet works in a step-by-step -step tutorial for the, the lay person. If you're not a technology person, that's okay, I got you. We're gonna explain this for you so you can take your FBI skills to the next level. This is for educational purposes only. Let's get into it. So the very first thing you need to do to know for a fact whether your neighbors are using your internet or your partner is seeing other people is you actually have to like this video and subscribe. This video is programmed in such a way that if you like and subscribe, you'll get more information at the end on how you can always know whether someone's being unfaithful. So like this video, subscribe, do it now, Okay, let's get into it. So first, I'm gonna give you a high-level overview on how your Wi-Fi works. When you purchase internet from Comcast or one of these service providers, you pay monthly for internet. And a cable is ran to your place of living, which is then plugged in to a modem. All you really need to know is that when you pay for internet, you get a cord that gives you access to the internet. But we want internet for all of our devices. Plus, we might want wireless internet. We just don't want a cord to plug into one computer. No, we want to somehow distribute the internet to everybody. So when you purchase your internet, and you get the wire with the internet attached to a modem. It also comes with a router. We won't spend any time thinking about the modem because it's not really that important. However, the router is the piece of equipment that's in charge of distributing the internet from that single cord to all the other devices and allows those devices to access the internet. And when multiple devices connect to a router, it forms what we call a LAN, also known as a local area network. Thus, when you log into a Wi-Fi network, the router is allowing that device access into the local area network. And the router's responsibilities actually do a number of things, including logging who's accessed the network, security issues, firewall, a number of things is responsible by the router. So when you connect to a Wi-Fi network and you try to use the internet, the router is what's sitting between your device, your iPhone or Android, and the internet, and it handles all the communication in between. And when this happens, the router is responsible for understanding who is connected to the network, what, is, what devices are currently offline, what sites are allowed, IP addresses, and more. And the router stores a lot of information about what happens on the network in logs. A log file is just a text file of all the things that have happened on that network. So if someone comes into the network, if someone leaves the network, what time, things of that nature are stored. And this information can be stored for weeks, days, months. You could probably log into your router right now and look at that log file and see all the devices I've ever connected to it, depending on the settings. So if you understand what I'm trying to say, if you wanna be an FBI agent and know who's connected to your router, maybe your neighbors are stealing your internet, maybe people are coming in that you didn't expect to be at your place, you can look at the log file and I'll have all the information there. So let's dive into actually how to do this in a very step-by-step -step manner so you can be an FBI agent. So as you can imagine, the router stores a lot of very sensitive information. And you might be wondering, how can you access it? When you connect to a local network, you're given an IP address. Everyone gets one, including the router. The IP address is nothing more than the internet way of having an address. Just like your house has an address and mail can be sent to it, an IP address is just an address for where that computer is. And all you need to know is that the router has an IP address that we need to find. Luckily, this is very easy. So the first thing you need to do is log into the Wi-Fi network. Now that you have access to the Wi-Fi network, you want to open up a browser and type in 192.168.0.1 in the search bar. Nine times out of 10, this will be the IP address of the router. And I'll take you to the login screen. If for whatever reason you get a 404 not found error, we're gonna have to do a little bit more digging, but it won't be too much work, I promise. Again, for those who did not get a login screen, what you wanna do is right click on your network preferences. Then you'll go to advanced and select TC over IP, and you should see the router IP address there. If you're on Windows, it's slightly different, but ultimately the same. You're gonna right click on your Wi-Fi, you're gonna find your local area network, you're gonna click on details, and you're gonna see the router IP address. So this is the IP address that we're gonna to use to access the router. Again, once you find the IP address, put it in the browser, no www, no HTTPS, no .com, just put the numbers in the browser, in the search, and hit enter. And it should take you to the login screen. Remember, you must be connected to the Wi-Fi of the router you're trying to connect to in order for this to work. So you must be connected to the Wi-Fi, have the router IP address, as I've previously discussed, put it in the browser, and then open up to the login screen. Here comes the tricky part. What is the router's username and password? Well, nine times out of 10, again, the username will be admin, lowercase, all lowercase, and the password will be password. Now, this, again, doesn't always work, but it usually is the default uh, username and password. If that doesn't work, 
I would then try admin admin, again all lowercase for both the username and the password. And if that doesn't work, I would find the router box, the actual physical router box that provides the ability for your device to talk to the internet and look behind it because the um, username and password will be there. Keep in mind that this is the default username and password. So this may have changed if the user who set up this internet or you set up this internet um, changed the password. But it, most people don't change their default password and username, so this should probably work. So if you get behind the router and you find the username and password and you try that and it doesn't work still, the only other option is that you'd have to reset the router. Usually there's a little pinhole button. You take a little pencil and you press in that button and hold it in there for 20 seconds and it's gonna reset the router. What this will do is it will actually create everything back to default settings. And once everything is in default settings, that username and password that's behind the router box will now work. So at this point, you should be able to log into the router. Generally speaking, every single router has a device list or a network map or something to show which devices are currently connected to that router. This may be underneath an advanced tab, this may be underneath a wireless tab, this may be underneath a status tab, but if you click around long enough, you'll find something that says, here are all the things that are currently connected to this router. And in my example, you can see here that that's called the device list. Here it shows currently connected devices along with previously connected devices that may be offline right now. Here you can see Kathy and Dawn's device is currently offline. If you see names that you don't expect, they could be your neighbors or someone else. That's for you to figure out. Again, depending on which router is being used, the information may look a little different, but in the end, there will be an area that, that displays the currently connected devices and the ones that are previously connected. And in order to monitor this router to see which devices are connected at which particular times, you might want to set up remote management. Remote management will give you the ability to log into this router when you're not near it. Remember, the only way we were able to log into our router is because we were, had access to the Wi-Fi network, which then gave us access to the router. And in some scenarios, if you're seeing devices that you're not expecting on your Wi-Fi, it might be useful to monitor this. I would want to know if someone's logging into my Wi-Fi at what time, but I'm not always home, and it's hard to monitor your Wi-Fi that way. Remember, the only way we were able to access the router is because we had access to the Wi-Fi, but if we were somewhere else, we couldn't have access to the router. That IP address, that 192.168.0.1, or whatever it might have been, that IP address that, that we put into our browser is only good while we're on that Wi-Fi. In order to access the router remotely from the internet, from anywhere in the world where we have an internet connection, we need to know what the public IP address is. By default, the router does not have remote management on. We have to turn that on and we have to set a port number. There's a lot of different terms here. Public IP address, private IP address, port numbers. It's a lot of information to take in and I don't think it's really that important that you guys become experts in this. But if you want to be able to access this router when you're not connected to the Wi-Fi, when you're not in the vicinity of that router, you need to enable remote management. This is disabled by default, but we can turn this on. And it's usually in the admin section or the options section or the settings. You'll have to find it, but it's somewhere in the administration uh, area of the router. Once you find the setting, you'll turn on remote management and you'll give it a port number. Generally speaking, the port number will be set by default. It might be like 8080. You really don't need to know what these things mean, but I'll explain how you can use them. When you enable remote management, you need to take note of what the port number is. And while you're still connected to that Wi-Fi, you need to then go to whatsmyipaddress.com. Record that information. This will give you the router's public IP address. Again, we won't go into details about what that actually means. Just remember, the public IP address. Just record that somewhere with the uh, port number. Now you can disconnect from that Wi-Fi network. You can go to the library and you can put in, or anywhere really, and you can put in that public IP address, then put a colon and put that port number in, that 8080 or whatever it might be. And when you uh, search for that in the browser, that'll take you to the router where you can log in again and now check the devices. So you don't actually have to be there anymore. You can manage it remotely from anywhere. At this information, you can now from anywhere monitor who is connected to that router and who is at that location. Do what you want with this information. So you can see that if someone else got access to your router, they'd be able to monitor you, monitor when you're having people over. They'll be able to do all these things to you that I just explained. I'm thinking about building an app that you just press one button and it sets all this up for you. Would you guys use that app? I'm curious, I have a link in the description of this video with a Google form. If I get over like two to 300 um, signups saying that they want to use an app that help you monitor your router, 
um, then I'll, I'll build it for you guys. As I said previously, having access to the router gives you a lot of power. You can know who's at the current location, who's connected to that Wi-Fi at any given time, set up remote management, and you can see it from anywhere who's currently at that location. That's a lot of power. You wouldn't want other people to do this to you on your home network. Therefore, it's extremely important that you change the default password when you set up your router. If you change your default password to something else, and you don't allow anyone access to your router, you will prevent all these issues from happening. Guys, my entire channel is dedicated to doing big brain things. No one's gonna outsmart us. I'm gonna train you on negotiation, manipulation, how to use psychology to win. I'm gonna build tools for you guys to have. Okay, so like and subscribe if you haven't already. I really appreciate that. That's it for now, guys. I have a lot more content coming out. Make sure you guys follow me on Instagram. My Instagram is kind of lacking and I wanna build that up because I wanna be able to go out and do the fake famous videos that I've previously done that you guys love so much. And when people ask me what's my Instagram to see who I am, I wanna have a little bit of clout so it seems a little, a little believable. So guys, follow me on Instagram if you wanna support me. I really appreciate that. Again, like and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys next time.